My name's Tara. Um, I'm from Australia and I'm an evolutionary ecologist. So what we do is we study how living things uh, interact with their environment and how the environment in turn shapes them. Okay, so you guys know about the environment and you know about the adaptations, but how do we actually study these things? So the first thing that we can do is we can do field work. Um, so that is a picture of me um, in Indonesian Borneo um, observing orangutans. We can work for zoos and so what we can do we can either work for the zoo or we team up with the zoo um, and we can use this simulated environment. So I used to work at an open range zoo here in Melbourne um, where you can um, become a, a zookeeper and you can also become a research assistant. Um, there's a whole host of things that you can do in zoological work and usually that means that you're working for a really ethical zoo um, who is also going to help you with um, conservation as well. And the third way which I'm doing at the moment is working in the lab. So I'm holding there a vial of fruit flies and um, another question that you guys asked was, um, do I do experiments on animals? Um, and I, I guess I sort of do, um, and that is the good thing about lab work, um, I do experiments with fruit flies. And so the good thing is that I can control everything about their environment in the lab. So when we go out into the field, we can observe a whole bunch of things. We can observe what they eat, who they interact with with who they meet with, where they're going, um, all of those kinds of things, how they interact with each other and the environment, um, but you can't control any of that environment and rightly so. Now in the zoo you can control it a little bit but you still have to take care of the welfare of the animals. Um, whereas in the lab when you use something like a fruit fly you can manipulate um, their environment a lot more easily and so some of the things so if you just zoom in here on that vial of fruit flies this is a video that i took um, with a microscope um, and you can actually observe their behavior um, in the same way but you can manipulate conditions so in this i've fed them different diets to see what you know what will happen to their courtship so sometimes um, the flies prefer somebody that eats a high sugar or a low sugar diet for a whole host of um, different reasons and so you can actually observe them in the same in the same way um, that you can with wild animals I got a lot of questions about whether or not we can get the same diseases um, as animals um, and whether animals can get COVID and things like that. Um, so, the, the, so the answer here is yes. So one of the first public, highly publicized examples of animals getting COVID um, was the, the lions and tigers at the Bronx Zoo in New York. Um, and so they actually did contract COVID, um, but don't worry because they are recovering and they are perfectly okay, but they can um, contract it and they can get sick from it. So not only do they contract the virus, but they actually um, they can get the, the sickness from it as well. We can also give the virus to um, our domesticated kittens um, and to our domesticated dogs. Now it's, it's highly likely that other animals can get um, COVID-19 as well, um, but we're not going to go around infecting them to find out, right? So we've just found this kind of stuff out through people actually giving it to, to their pets. But the good news is, is that they do seem somewhat more resilient than what we are. Um, so they don't uh, seem to suffer as much. We need to take care of them, which just means that um, we need to make sure that if we're sick, that we get them checked out and that we still, um, even with pets, even if walking our dog, that we still maintain all those normal social distancing things. Um, and that's, yeah. And so we call diseases like coronaviruses um, that can be transferred from one species to another zoonotic diseases. And so that's why it's also important because we don't know where coronavirus exactly came from yet. We don't know what what um, species or what animal it came from, but we do know it came from an animal and we do know it came from um, interfering with wildlife and ecosystems. That's what we do know, but we don't exactly know the, the how, what, when and why of that. So that's why it's really important to, that we conserve. It's another reason to conserve our ecosystems.